I'm going to talk to you about AI and why I think we might be making the wrong systems faster. That leaves too little time to ensure our well-being, which I think should be at the core. If you haven't lived under a rock, you have seen the news about efficiency gains, productivity gains, in every field there is. At the same time, you have probably read that we are cutting down investments into healthcare. I even read an article saying that we no longer can afford to give our elderly people hot meals. We are shipping them cold meals. That one could think, what does that have to do with AI and the what? Well, I would say they are both perfect examples of our over-efficiency and productivity-focused society. Because if cold meals were the best, so when I or you went on your first date, we would say, ah, oh, let's go and find something in the fridge and heat it up. But we don't. Because there are more things to life than just productivity and efficiency. But when we look at the industry, we see that the Finnish industry appoints about 90% to projects that either have productivity or efficiency as one of their main goals. That leaves 10% for leadership, sustainability, and all other kinds of valuable lead things. This is just too little. And then, at the other end, we have something nagging away the productivity gains that we are pressing for. Because at the other end of the scale, we are spending one billion euros on mental health-related sick leaves in this country with six million people. If that ain't crazy, then tell me what is. And you might become a little bit <laughs> daunted. Can we do something about this? Yes, we can, and we have done so. We have fixed this once before. In the 60s and 70s, Finland was leading the wrong competition. We were actually among the top performers at health heart and vascular diseases. Later on, we got neck, back and shoulder pain. But we were honest. We looked at the problem from a holistic point of view. We arranged programs for stop smoking, for eating better. We educated our doctors, found new medicine. We looked at it from many different angles and we fixed it. We need to fix the mental health issue. And in the era of AI, we need to bring well-being into our equation, into our projects. Some might say that these two are opposite. And I think we all know, if you go into your center and think, when are you the most productive? It's when you're feeling well when you're well-rested, when you're happy, when you know you have a goal and it's clear you're going somewhere, that's when you're productive. So productivity and efficiency should partner up with well-being and do it now. Because I don't think any one of you said you are at your best when you're ill-being. If you look at the facts, Finland has a great position to stand from. Our data is structured, it's well-made. You have all seen those COVID movies of people standing one meter apart. They're Finns. They follow the rules. You say one meter, okay, 1.0. We have a cold, great climate, well suitable for data centers. The era of AI will take a lot of energy, 
And in a few weeks' time, we will close our last coal plant four years ahead of schedule in this country. And if you want some cherry on this topping, we have a few of the world's top 10 supercomputers. And of course, they run on green energy, of course. So if you're looking to go and take part in the gold rush, then don't head for Klondike. Come here, come here. Let's take a look in the mirror. What does the research say? We know for a fact that companies that invest in well-being, not only like something you put on your website and say, oh, look, my social responsibility plan, whoo! No, the companies that really fundamentally invest in well-being, they outperform their competitors. We also know that societies that are prosperous, that are productive, they are innovative. Innovation is an efficient marker for prosperity in nations. And what kills innovation? That's stress. Stress is a toxic poison to innovation. So if we know all this, if we know that stress kills innovation, if we know that innovation is good for productivity and productive nations are prosperous, then I suppose it's kind of a no-brainer. So if we don't want well-being because it's nice to feel well, then we can choose to be well-being for the productivity, for the money, if you might say so. There are many great examples of how AI is already making us feel better. One of them is a Finnish research team that has developed a machine learning equipment that allows us to detect signals in unborn babies to detect deficiency in oxygen before the babies are even born. We all wear watches and rings detecting our sleep, our food, our exercise patterns. So there are lots of great examples on how we are actually starting to use AI as a tool for well-being. But we can do more. We can do this at a systematical level. One of my favorite AI tools or methods is sentiment analysis, which means that you take a snippet of words or a conversation, and you break it down into patterns, parts of words or even smaller patterns. And then you analyze the sentiment. Was this said in a positive, in a neutral, or in a negative way? And I think we could use sentiment analysis to enhance our well-being at scale. Being one of those extroverted kind of girls, if I go into a meeting with a great idea, I tend to be very bold and let's do it and let's go and blah, 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 blah. I might not see that Lisa is actually zooming out. I might not even hear her that she's asking me, what about the timetable? What about compliance? Because I'm so over, all over the place. But if I have a sentiment tool, and I do, I can go back and look at the statistics and look at the findings, and I can notice, oh, Lisa had some question, and I can, when I'm calm, I can go back and say, oh, let's talk about the timetable. So sentiment analysis can make me and everyone else a better leader. Think if we could put sentiment analysis in schools. We could stop the bullying before it really takes takes a toll on someone. And it could leave more room for teachers to teach. And of course, in organizations, if we use this, we will detect those passive-aggressive leadership styles. And I suppose there are a few of you here that believe that those kind of ways are good for productivity. There are ways 
where we need to use less AI. And that is where, when we are going on a search for our core. I believe that when we move forward into an era of AI, we need to embrace who we really are. We need to teach the next generation values, ethics, not how to fold your clothes. That we can leave for the robots. But that human connection, that is where our focus should go. Because we really need to figure out who we are. Because if we don't know who we are, we are at risk of becoming bot shit. I want to tell you a story about my grandfather, Kalle. He was a war veteran. He spent almost five years in the service. And when he came home, he started a farm. He had a dairy farm. Fast forward a decade or so, he stopped the farm, farming. And when the cows left, my grandfather took off his watch, never to wear it ever again. And he told me that for him, wearing this watch, being at this strict time, time schedule, twice a day, see to the cows, was a form of imprisonment. For this war veteran, a simple technology, a watch, symbolized imprisonment. Being a mother of three, I'm afraid that when we go into this society of technology, that our mind shift is not clear, that we use the technology not for an imprisonment tool, but for something that creates freedom, well-being. I think we need to find a basis for well-being. It can be done in many ways. At my company, we have deployed four-day work week so that we are free Friday, Saturday, Sunday, extended weekend in order to rest. This does not mean that we never stress. It just means we have made a decision to build our foundation upon well-being. On top of that, we have, of course, used all kinds of AI technology there is. Pattern recognition was the first, but of course, all the LLMs came. And as we grow, we learn new ways to do this. And I think we have just seen the beginning. But I think wherever we go, the foundation is there, and it will not move. So when I look at the future, I see a place where society is helped by AI, companies are stronger by AI, and you and me are happier and healthier by the use of AI. Entrepreneurs are well rested, and parents have children who are not bullied in school, that they actually have time to cherish and build ethics and values with. So we are at a crossroad. Where do we go from here? How do we choose to use AI? How do we get well-being into this equation? That is a choice that we, in the era of AI, should be made, should make. This choice is yours, and this choice is mine, and we need to make it today. Thank you so much.